y'all, I'm Jackie, and today I'll be sharing with you some of my favorite poses that I do after sitting at a desk all day. So if you have them, I would recommend grabbing two blocks, um, or you can use big thick books or a blanket. And then I also have a yoga strap, but you can just use a towel or any other substitute. So our first pose is going to be supported fish. This is where your blocks or your blanket will come in handy. I'm going to give you all two variations, one with only one block or blanket, and it's going to go right where your bra strap is or would be if you're not wearing one. So I like to start at the lowest setting. So we have lowest, medium, highest. All right. So at the lowest setting, I'm going to bring this to the middle of my back. And this is just going to help open up my chest. And then you can bring your head all the way back. This might be way too much of a chest opening. So if it is, come back up. You can put a blanket under there instead. Or I like to put a block at the second highest setting underneath my head. So you might need to play around with this, see what works best for you. And I like to let my shoulders roll off of the block, really opening through the chest. And you can let the legs come out long like I'm doing right now, or you can bring the soles of the feet together to start opening up those hips. And if it's comfortable, close your eyes here and just feel your belly rise as you fill it with air and softly release back towards the floor as you let it go. So you can stay in this pose for 30 seconds, five minutes, maybe an hour, just whatever feels good to you. And we'll move on to the next pose. My next favorite pose that I do every single day is just a simple <laughs> reclined twist. So depending on how deep you need to twist, I'll give you all a couple variations. So I like to start with knees into my chest and then give myself a little back massage. All you have to do is just rock your knees side to side. And then you can draw little circles on the ceiling and switch directions. And for the least intense variation, I would start with bringing the knees in, move the hips over to the right and drop your knees over to the left. And now from here, you can extend your arms like wings or maybe goal post them. And you can rock your head side to side and eventually look over your right shoulder and close your eyes. And then a deeper variation that I like to do some days is keeping the right knee squeezed in. Extend the left leg long, and then draw the right knee across your body. Hips again, inch over to the left. You can extend your arms again, or bring that left hand to the top of your right knee, and just a gentle pull. And same thing with your head, you can rock it, or eventually look over the right shoulder. All right, so we'll do both of those on the other side. So hug your knees in. Relax your arms, draw your hips to the left, drop your knees to the right. And rock your head side to side. Eventually landing in stillness, looking over your left shoulder. Option to close your eyes and focus on your breath. And we'll take that slightly more intense stretch, bringing the knees back in. Squeeze your left knee in towards your chest, extend your right leg long. And draw your knee over to the right, hips to the left. And settle in. Just 
bring it back to center, and just even out your hips, shaking the knees side to side. Our next pose is going to be child's pose, which is also one of my favorites. So bring the um, bring your big toes to touch. Come into a tabletop, and then you can keep your knees together, or I like to keep my knees really wide so that my belly can rest between my thighs as I send my hips back towards my heels. And you can walk your hands forward and then melt your chest and your forehead down towards the ground. And then to add on a little tricep stretch, I like to walk my hands a little bit more forward, bring the palms together, bend your elbows, and then bring your thumbs to the back of your neck. If you want to deepen, you can begin to walk the elbows a little bit more forward. Send your hips further back towards your heels and then breathe into your back body. And while you're in this pose, try to really relax wherever you can. Maybe that's softening your jaw or your eyebrows or the space between your shoulders. All right, moving on to next stretches. Come to a comfortable seat. Go grow really tall through the crown of your head. Soften your shoulders. Take a deep breath in and let it go. Slowly drop your chin to your chest and then roll your right ear toward your right shoulder. And not trying to force it down, just softening. Try to relax your shoulders and your jaw. And take one more big breath in. And breathe it out. Begin to look over your right shoulder, kind of down towards the ground. Just changing up the stretch. And if it feels good, you can lift your chin out of your chest, looking more towards the right. Slowly bring your chin back down and then back into center. And begin to roll your left ear towards your left shoulder, switching sides. And again, take a deep breath in. Exhale to soften everything down. Begin to look over your left shoulder, down towards the ground. And then option to lift your chin up, looking over to the left. Take it really slow, shoulder. Take it really slow. Chin comes down towards your shoulder and back into your chest. Inhale to lift your chin up towards the sky, open up through your throat. Exhale, bring it back down to neutral. All right, we're moving into cow face pose. So from a cross-legged position, extend your right leg out to the side and then Bring your left knee to face forward, straight in front of you. Couple variations. So you can bend your right knee, plant your right foot in front of your left shin. You can look up in the video if you need. Or if you want a little bit more, you can stamp that right foot outside of your left thigh. And a third step, even more intense, bring your right heel towards your left glute and stack the knees towards one another. You can kind of shimmy out your hips, flex your toes, cow face legs. Now, if you arrive at any of these variations and it doesn't feel good or there's any pain, I suggest that you come back to one of those steps. So foot either outside your quad or your shin. All right, so I'm taking full cow face or gomukasana. Adding the cow face arms, this is where you can grab a strap or you can just use air, it's fine. So arms reach up as you inhale. Exhale, right hand grabs for your left elbow. Left fingertips reach down your back. It's easy to really crunch your neck in, so lift your chin slightly out of your chest to keep length in the back of your neck. You can stay here or sweep that right arm up to grab those left fingers. This is where if you can't reach the fingers, you can grab for your shirt, grab a strap, or maybe a t-shirt or a towel. And this is where you can kind of intensify to pull on whatever you're holding. So both hands pull opposite directions. 
but keep your belly engaged, navel towards your spine. Grow tall through the crown of your head. Take a deep breath in. Stay for a breath out. All right, one more deep breath in. Breath out. All right, we're gonna move to the other side. So unwind your arms. Place your strap down. We're gonna switch legs. So bring the left leg out. Right foot comes in. Point your right knee straight forward. And make a pit stop that works for you. So stamp that left foot right by your, sorry. Stamp your left foot by your right shin. Or if you want more, left foot outside your right quad. Or again, stack your knees for full Gomukhasana or cow face pose. So bring those heels in as close to your glutes as feels comfortable. Flex your toes. And then we'll take a deep breath in, sweep your arms up. Exhale this time, left hand grabs right elbow, right fingers glide down your back. And snuggle that elbow down, lift your chin out of your chest. And add more if you'd like by reaching the left hand down and around, up towards your right fingers. And again, grab the strap if you want. This side might be more open, it might be tighter. But as humans, we're usually a little imbalanced. So to intensify, you can pull on opposite directions, whatever you're holding on to with both hands. Pull your navel in towards your spine, wrap the ribs together. Grow a little taller through the crown of your head. Exhale to soften your shoulders. Good, one more round of breath. Breathe in. Breathe out. Slowly unwind. All right, so now we are moving on to opening up the hip flexors. So come into tabletop pose, just on all fours. And that right leg, you can extend out for a moment, flex your feet, round your ankle, and step your right foot through between your hands. Now to open up that left hip flexor, send your left knee further back, just a little, just a few inches back. Low crescent lunge as your arms reach up or you can keep your hands at your heart. So to open up that left psoas area, you hinge your hips forward and down, but keep your core really tight. So we don't wanna just like let it hang loose. We wanna really engage here. You can also rest your hands on to your right thigh. And really be mindful of each breath that you take. Slow quality breaths in and out. And again, stay longer if you want. We're moving on to the next variation of this pose. Left palm is gonna come down inside your right foot. Right arm is gonna reach up towards the sky. So really stretch those right fingertips up. You can hold this twist as long as you want or add a quad stretch. Bend your left leg, reach back with your right hand and maybe grab to the top of your foot. This is another great place to add your strap if you want. Or your towel. Flick it around your foot. And you can use this as your quad stretch. Slowly release. Wiggle that right foot outside your right hand and coming into lizard pose. So this is gonna get into that right hip flexor area right for you. You can stay right here or activate your lizard by tucking your toes and lifting your back knee. And you can stay right here or maybe you come down to your forearms. And wherever you are, just breathe for a few rounds. Back off when you need to back off. All right, we're gonna take all those variations on the other side. So come back to tabletop, wiggle out your hips. All right, other side, send your left leg back behind you. Roll out your ankle. Left foot steps between your hands and then wiggle that right knee back further. 
Make lots of space for that right psoas area. When you're ready, rise to low crescent lunge, arms up at your heart or on top of your left thigh. But make sure those ribs knit inward, lifting the ribs out of your pelvic floor. Lots of length. Good, breathe. When you're ready, we'll move into that twist. Right palm down, inhale, left arm reaches up. You can squeeze the shoulder blades together and kind of roll the chest open towards the sky to get a deeper twist. And if you want that quad stretch, bend your right knee, reach back with your hand. Maybe you add that strap or maybe you grab your foot. You can also just grab nothing, just reach actively back and squeeze your heel in towards your glute. Just a couple breaths into that right thigh. Slowly release your foot. Unwind hands inside your left leg. So maybe wiggle that left foot to the left. Blizzard pose on this side. Keep your knee down or tuck your toes, lift your leg. Stay here or you can maybe bend down into your forearms. A few rounds of breath. All right, slowly come out. We're gonna come back into that tabletop pose and do a few rounds of cat-cow. So as you inhale, drop your belly down, tilt your tailbone up, and then squeeze your shoulder blades together to look forward. Deep breath in. Exhale, cat pose, chin to chest, round your spine, pull your navel in. Good, inhale, belly drops, heart shines forward. Exhale, curl and round. And you can take a few rounds of these. And I like to add kind of organic movement, sending the hips back towards your heels. You can make full body circles. And really just anything that feels good to you. Just a couple rounds of breath to feel it out. All right, so another thing that's really good for your posture after sitting all day is app work. So we're just gonna do a little bit of boat pose. Grab for the back of your legs. So you're sitting on your glutes, grab for the back of your legs and kind of rock back so that your feet are floating. It's really easy to round your spine like this and kind of curl in, but we really wanna focus on keeping the chest open. So squeeze the shoulder blades together, drop your shoulder heads down towards the ground. Think lots of space between your shoulder heads and your ears. You can stay right here, working your core, squeeze it in tight, or you can bring the shins parallel to the ground, but notice, are you rounding? Take it a step back if so. You can also release your hands, straighten out your legs. Woo, that's past my edge today. So do what works for you. Stay right here, breathe. We're gonna go high boat to low boat, or stay in one of your choice. Breathe in. Breathe out. Good, breathe in. Exhale, low boat. Inhale, high boat. Exhale, low. Inhale, high. Exhale, low. Inhale, high. Exhale, low. Three more, inhale, high. Exhale, low. Two more, inhale, high. Exhale, low. Last one, inhale, high. Exhale, low, hold low, release. Bring your knees into your chest. Give yourself that back massage again. All right, just one more set of ab work. Bring your hands, clasp them behind your head. Keep your knees into your chest and then try to lift your low back off the ground. Bring your knees closer into your nose. So inhale, bring them in. Exhale, extend your legs long. Keep your low back on the ground here. Inhale, lift your low back up, squeeze your knees in. Exhale, reach. Good, five more, inhale up. Exhale, extend. Inhale, curl. Exhale, extend. Four more, inhale. Exhale, extend. Three more, inhale up. 
Exhale, reach. Two more. Inhale, breathe it in. Exhale, reach. Last one. Inhale. Exhale, reach. Relax. Okay, so let's come into puppy pose now. Coming back onto all fours. Walk your hands forward. Keep your hips over your knees. So sometimes they want to go back, sometimes they want to go forward. Keep them right over your knees and then melt your chest out. Maybe your face stays lifted or you can lower your forehead or your chin down to the ground. And just a few rounds of breath. Slowly walk your hands back up. We're gonna come into camel pose. All right, so come on to your knees. Bring your hands to your low back. Push your hips forward and pull your belly button in. So we want this back bend to come out of the upper chest and not the low back. So think about just upper back. So press your hands into your sacrum. Lift up through your chest and breathe. Baby camel. If you want to lean back and have your hands grab your ankles or your heels, go for it. A couple breaths. Chest stays open. All right, slowly bring your hips back down. Clasp your hands behind you at your low back. Send your knuckles down towards the ground. Lift your chest towards the sky. Breathe in and breathe out. All right, one more pose on each side and then we'll bring it two legs up the wall to get a good, sweet rest. All right, back to that tabletop. Send your right leg back behind you. Half pigeon. Bring that right knee to the outside of your right hand. Walk your right foot slightly forward towards your left hand. Glide your left leg back. So maybe that heel is in more. Maybe it's parallel. But what we want we don't want to be like this. We don't want to keep that left hip up. We want to roll that left hip down and pull the right hip up and back. So you can stay lifted or you can choose to fold down. And you can also grab a block, blanket, whatever you got and bring it underneath your forearms. And come all the way down. Then just take a few rounds of breaths into your back body, like really filling it up and letting it go. All right, moving on to the other side, walk your hands back up, tuck your back toes, walk them in. And it might feel good to come back with that tabletop and make little circles with your knee, your hips. And we'll move on to the other side. Left leg extends back. Left knee outside your left wrist. Walk that right, sorry, left foot toward your right hand. Glide your right leg back. Again, we don't want to be really open here. Want to aim to roll the right hip down and peel the left hip up and back. Stay lifted or lower. And just breathe. And if you notice any pain or pinching, come back out of it a little bit. Make sure those left toes are flexed. All right, begin to walk back up. Come back into that tabletop and maybe you shake out that leg. Just however feels good. All right, so we're moving into our final resting pose, which is legs up the wall. If you do not have a free wall, then that's totally fine. You can just lay on your back for a regular Shavasana. But for this one, I just wanted to be inverted just to get the blood flowing back. All right, so you can grab a block or a blanket might feel better underneath your head. 
But what we really want to do is get our butts right up against the wall. All right, so bring that butt right up against the wall. Come onto your back and send your feet up. So kind of wiggle yourself up against the wall. And then you can bring a block underneath. And anything that with your arms, you can let them go up overhead, whatever feels good to you. And all you have to do here is just breathe. And try to relax your kneecaps, your thighs, soften your belly, your chest. Relax the space between your eyebrows and release your bottom teeth away from your top teeth. Mindfully breathing in, completely breathing out. All right, y'all. Well, those were just some of my favorite post-work poses. And if any of them felt really good and you wanted to stay longer, then totally feel free to go back and just do those poses only. But as always, thank you so much for listening. If you have any requests or suggestions or comments of any kind, please let me know. I'd love to hear from you. Thank you. Namaste.